And we are back. Falcon franchise. So we have another episode. We're going to be facing the Carolina Panthers, who are currently 5-4. and four. They are first in our division. They are third in the conference, behind, well, four, technically. Well, the, what teams was it again? The Bears, Eagles, and Giants all have a better record, but the Eagles and Giants who play in the same division, so, yeah. This is going to be a pretty tough game, as last time we played, we lost 17 to nothing. It wasn't very close at all. As we now look to bounce back, after starting the season now 2-0, we've gone 0-6 oh, since. We do have a new QB1 in the building. And this could be good. We are playing against the Carolina Panthers. He was drafted first overall by that team. We're going to... By the way, I went and looked at some college players. We currently have the fifth overall pick, I believe. It doesn't say anywhere here, but I went and looked at the records. And it kind of said that we were to fifth fourth. So as you can see, Philip Davis is there at number one. But there isn't another quarterback until Tyler Myers, all the way down to 18. We also have Brent. McGraw, I'm somewhat high on. So I'm really hoping we can manage to land Philip Davis. If our season continues like this, obviously I don't want us to be drafting a quarterback in the first round. I don't want us to be drafting anyone at pick number one. We have Christian McCaffrey we need to stop. They have Sam Darnold and then Jimmy Carlson. That is not going to matter, though. They are past 53, run 47. They are very balanced. So I ultimately agree. Oops. With that, they're pretty bad offense, it seems, besides rushing yards. So they may try and dominate it this, this game. They're a very good defense. They call zone a lot. So, I believe for zone, they also run blitz zone blitzes. So this is a zone heavy team. I don't know if this is good or bad. Like, I don't know if the 68% means, like, him catches allowed. Like, you know, quarterbacks, like, 68% of the time complete a pass. Or if that means 68% of the time it's incomplete. I don't know. Oh, it says at the bottom. All right, well, I... Think we're gonna go medium. We're gonna we're gonna test him a lot. Like always, best offense or I need to say that best defense, worst offense. I feel like we kind of have to rock our coordinator down though. Any injuries? Hopefully not. We are all good. Now, we have some players to upgrade. Drew Dahlman, Saquon Hampton, Matt Hennessy, 
you know, some decent guys, backups, majority, are going to go to rosters, because that's the main way I know how to do. We go to the Panthers. Might as well just look like this. They have Sam Darnold. He's more than likely going to start. He's 26. He got a pretty good payday. Running back, we already know Christian McCaffrey, but they also have Chuba Hubbard. Chuba Hubbard. He's still on his rookie deal, and he's very solid. Fullback, they have Mason Stoke, whatever. DJ Moore, 92 overall. They are playing up from round, so I don't think that's their actual boost. Robbie Anderson, 85. He's only in 83. I think he's going to be hitting the market. Oh, no, he's got a long deal. I thought he'd be... They have Terrence Marshall, she, Shy Smith, I don't know, and then Joe Reed. Tommy Travel, and they also have Brandon Hitchens, rookie. Steve Den, Caron Christian. They have Dennis Daly, Tim Donnelly, Star Dev rookie, very solid. They also have Mason Cole. Wow, they have depth. They have Froholt and Joe Dale, and then Taylor Moten, who is currently 88 overall. Brian Burns, you already know. Tier Gross Matos, pretty good. Derek Brown, very good. They also have Sheldon Rankins as a backup. Hassan Reddick, very good. Nick Wiskowski, solid. Jack Thompson, very good. Cornerback Svon Gilmer, good. Dante Jackson, good. He is injured, though. C.A. Henderson, pretty good. J.C. Horn. Myers Sermons. This team's just very well rounded. Jeremy Chin. John Phillips, like, oh my god. Graham Gano and Scott Pagel. Now, they did have Dante Jackson, I believe, injured. So we're going to quickly see if they have anyone injured. They only have Dante Fowler Jr. He's on IR. He'll return hopefully later this season. They only have Dante Jackson injured, and he's out for this week. So that is perfect for us. As we're going to play this game, we're going to, well, we're not going to play. We're going to watch it. So you do remember at the very beginning of the episode, we had a short week conversation with um, whatever his name is, Cam Newton. So, yeah, we're going to, we're not going to really oh, know anything until... After the game, about how the other teams did, kick us off, they're rocking the black shirts, white pants, we're rocking the all whites, they're rocking silver-ish helmets, we're rocking black I believe, so something I'm excited for as well, hopefully with Madden as well, I don't know if they'll really do that, because Madden doesn't seem to really update, Sam Darwin having a solid year as well, is I believe next year in real life so what would it be 2022 2023 nfl season they're going to be allowed three different types of helmets i believe it's going to be some the jerseys going to be uh, i believe a home a away and a color rush so for like the washington commanders who you know just kind of got announced as mccaffrey's going to break that tackle I believe they have a black one, a white one, and a red one, if I'm not mistaken. So, I'm very interested. McCaffrey makes a man miss, but gets laid out by Richie Grant. You hear the Panthers fans chanting. Heave ho. I don't know. Shubba Hubbard. Got the carry. Got a gain of two. Second eight. One of the teams that do have a worse record than us 
the Saints, division rival. We have the same record, but we did beat them earlier on in the season as Chubba Hubbard gets a good game. So, you know, we have the advantage over them, which is good for, you know, record-wise, but not draft pick-wise. Obviously, you know, most teams... There's no real in-between. You either want a really good draft pick or a really good season. And ultimately, we have the draft pick part so far, but, you know, if only we would have lost to the Saints, I would have gave us a better record. Another team is the Chargers, who you may have saw earlier. John Kaminsky sacks Sam Donald for 4th and 15. And we're going to see a 53-yard attempt from Graham Gano. Is the Chargers. They are currently 0 and 8. And the kick is good. Panthers take the lead 3 0. They are the only winless team remaining in the NFL. I believe we don't have a single undefeated team left. So they're the only team at the moment with a 0. You can see 0 and 8 down there. As Cam Newton. Going to get his first start as a Carolina, not Carolina Panther. Atlanta Falcon. He started a bit. Well, he didn't start. He played last game. Because we benched Kirk Cousins. Who is no longer on our team. I don't know if he's on a team. As we saw a handoff from Owen Gordon. Dink is in the yards. Ever since... We hired our newest offensive coordinator. He's really ran the ball a lot. And I like that. Because our old ones didn't really run the ball. But at the same time, I don't like it because they, he always tries to run the ball. So, it's very risky. Dune on the run. Horrible pass, but there is a penalty. A late penalty as well. And they're going to say pass interference on Stevon Gilmer. He was Mar blocking Marquise Brown in a way, but at the same time, I don't think that ball would have been catchable either way. So I believe the Falcons just got bailed out of it there. As you can see here, this offensive coordinator, he loves to run the ball. It seems like he runs the ball every two. Like, it's like a two to one ratio with this coordinator. Kyle Pitts, what a throw and catch. Cam Newton completing his first pass as a starter for the Atlanta Falcons. As the Buccaneers and Saints will be playing each other this week as well. Fern 7, Newton. Brian Burns is going to take him down. This is what we wanted. We wanted a quarterback to be mobile, but we do have a very unfortunate matchup against Brian Burns this week. Fair caught at the 11. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. So, yeah. There is a player I'm interested in trading for as well at the, the offseason. I was looking off camera because, you know, I don't really want to just record me looking at stuff. And the Giants have, like, Four stud quarterbacks. I'm gonna hit you. They have, like, their starter. They have Daniel Jones as a backup. And they have, like, two 71 overall star dev quarterbacks. And one, what a throw and catch there. That's Robbie Anderson. And one of them has, like, 82 speed. Now, that isn't very fast. But it's a lot, well, not compared to Cam Newton. That is a lot faster than we've had previously. As McCaffrey's going to get a big run up to the 48. And that probably takes us to the end of first. I don't understand how McCaffrey's getting so many yards off these carries. Our whole thing was to, I believe, I might have misclicked something. Stop the outside runs. And yet that seems to be their primary. Is to run straight to the tackle. Not really up the middle through the guards and center, but straight to the, the tackles. 
And there it was again. He went through, I believe, the, uh, the tight end and the tackle there. So that's an outside run. As that pass is complete, that is Anderson to the 32 for a first down. But yeah, kind of struggling. Darnold looking. Quick throw, complete to Ian Tom, not Ian Thomas, uh, Tommy Tremble. That was a gain of six. I kind of saw that coming as soon as I saw the, the turn. But that was a very good route. Another quick pass to DJ Moore. Darnold. Very risky throw, but DJ Moore comes down to catch and ends up working in their favors. It's not for a first down. Darnold looking. Cross middle. He has Robbie Anderson up to the 10. Darnold. He knows about this pass rush. You can see there's two superstars up there already. He is getting these balls out fast. McCaffrey, DJ Moore, I was not McCaffrey. Down to like the half yard line. And with the fullback and running back in the backfield, I can assume it's a run. And we are going to stop it for a tackle for loss. Unsure, that is Foya Seto Lukun. Second and goal. You have McCaffrey in the backfield. It looks like three on the right, one to the left. There's a hand on McCaffrey, and he's going to get in for the touchdown. And the Panthers take a 9 0 lead with the extra point to come. Kick is up. And good. Panthers lead this game 10 0. A loss here would almost eliminate us from the playoffs, it feels like. Maybe not, though. As we have to remember, last season. What did we go? 7, 9, and 1? And we are still in the hunt until the very end. Scoring gets scary. He's going to take it up to 27 for a gain of 3. It's going to be, uh, they're going to say 2. 2nd and 8. So we, so, we may have a horrible start, but as long as we don't, you know, start out horrendous. Like, we are very bad now, but like, I'd say once we go, if we go under 500, or, and by that, I mean, like, we already are under 500, but, like, once we get nine wins, like, depending on the amount of wins we have at that, nine losses, excuse me, so for, like, I don't know, four, nine, I'd say our season's more than likely done, but, you know, we don't know until we're either eliminated or we're in. We still are very early in where this is week 10, I believe. That pass, that was Steve Wesley gets the first down. I haven't done a lot of actual game commentary, just focused on, you know, our odds at, you know, playoffs and how our team's looking. This is Kyle Pitts up to the 15. Cam Newton, six for six so far. Kansas City currently seven to one at the bottom. They are the best team in the league record-wise. As Newton's rolling out, he's gonna just check it down to Kyle Pitts for a gain of two. And there's a timeout by the Falcons. I don't know if there's two-minute warning or something. I guess it did happen a while ago. I guess there's only 52 seconds. Or so. Second and eight now from 13. Newton. Dangerous pass. As Nick Kwiatkowski was on it. Intended for Kyle Pitts. Bring up third and eight. And I do believe that was Newton's first incompletion of the game. Third and eight. Newton. He's going to attempt to scramble. And Brian Burns is going to bring him down. There was a bit of a hole. But he would have had to get, on, get through, I believe, the linebacker. So... 4 for 9, though, from the 13. Kick is up. And good. And Falcons score to make this game 10 to 3. But Carolina is still eating. And with 40 seconds and two timeouts, they could still get more points at the half. 
or before the, the, the half. They're starting at their own 25. Arnold from first and ten. He's throwing. Incomplete. Intended for I don't know. Maybe McCaffrey. He had McCaffrey, but ultimately was not able to throw it accurately enough. As up to the twenty eight that is probably tremble. That's gonna bring up third and seven. From the twenty eight. With twenty seven seconds left. He got out of bounds. And they still have two timeouts. Darnold. He's going to check it down, and that's going to be complete to DJ Moore. That's going to take him up to the 36. And they're just going to run the ball. They're not going to attempt to Hail Mary or anything. And McCaffrey took it up to the 45, so good game, but ultimately not enough to do anything. And there's the first half stats for those of you who are curious. There's not going to be much of a halftime show. I believe we're just going to look at the schedule for this week. Yes, we are. Now, key games. Buccaneers and Saints. That signifies us there. And the Panthers. If the Panthers lose and the Buccaneers win, Buccaneers take over the division. Next, we had the Chiefs and Broncos. The Chiefs looking to maintain the best record in the league. The Broncos looking to make the division one step closer. And last, Seahawks and Cardinals. Very crucial divisional matchup on Monday Night Football. As we look now at the individual team stats. Here are the Falcons when it comes down to throwing the ball short. See Cam Newton, Kyle Pitts, Melvin Gordon, and Calvin Ridley. Here are the Panthers when it comes down to throwing the ball short. We see Darnold. I believe that is Kwiatkowski, maybe. It has done with the halftime show. Falcons received second half kickoff with a score of 10 to 3. That kick is in the back of the end zone and unreturnable, so the Falcons will start at their own 25. Brian Burns with his X Factor. Well, Newton better run. Brian Burns is after him, and he's going to go down. But there is a penalty. It's more than likely holding a face mask, and it's holding on to the offense on Greg Goodell. And they're going to elect to accept the penalty, so that's going to wipe away a sack from Brian Burns. Newton. Pass wait to Gordon. He's gonna fight his way up to the 18 for a modest gain of three. Looked like it had potential, but ultimately the receiver couldn't stick a block. Second and 17 now from the 18. Newton hands it off to Gordon, and Shaq Thompson is there to blow it up. But in doing so, uh, Gordon got a gain of one, I believe. Coming up third and 16. Newton, roll out, he's going to throw it deep on the run, and that pass is incomplete, intended for Marquise Brown in what appeared to be double coverage towards the end, and that's going to bring up 4th from 16, and the punting unit is out there, pumping away at the 8 yard line, it's going to be fielded just before the 40, and McCaffrey is going to take it up to the 40, that's more of the 39, but a generous spot. Also, I don't understand. How is McCaffrey always making these jukes? Like, when are they going to realize? He doesn't do that in real life. Like, he does, but like, he hasn't in two years. He has, he's barely played any football in the past two years. Second and three now, though. Overthrows this man. And there's literally trade talks about him at this point because of how much he gets injured. Like, I don't know if it's, like, abilities he has or what, but they seem slightly OP. If down goes Darnold, Grady Jarrett gets a sack. If, you know, when there's a guy, like, two yards away from him running at him full speed and he's just now catching the ball off of a punt, he's able to make that juke. 
And yet there's my guy who friggin' just is forced to take the hit in the same distance. It just doesn't make sense. But anyway, first and ten at the 24. The Falcons get the ball back. We see Calvin Ridley in motion. And it is going to be a run to Gordon, who's going to get no yards. As Gordon is currently six carries for five yards. If you're the Falcons this situation, you've got to either start trying to run the ball or abandon it. And if I'm in this situation, I'm, I'm not even questioning. I'm abandoning it. Cam Newton has been playing very solid this whole game. Quit giving it to Melvin Gordon unless if he's a receiving option and not a two-yard check down as well. Newton throwing on the run. Kyle Pitts comes down with the catch for a gain of 20 and a first down. Moving the chains. Carolina is going to challenge it. Carolina may have saw some. Maybe didn't get the feet inbounds. It looks like he does. There's one. It looks like two. And I don't think he ever bobbled it or anything. I think he held on the whole way. So it just depends on was he in bounds. And they're going to say no as I press exit. <laughs> that, that, does, that does me nothing. I wanted to exit so I could see a replay, but I, I, I guess I don't get to. <laughs> and the only time I can see is at the end of the game, and I'm probably going to forget by then. But first and 10 from the 42, after a very controversial call to Eric McCaffrey, going to juke out a man, take it across and field to the 45. The Falcons just have no answer for this man. It appears no team should, apparently, if he friggin' this good, apparently. First and ten, Darnold. Over the middle, complete, Robbie Anderson. That's going to be enough for a first down up to the 29. This is going to be a handoff to McCaffrey. He's going to get probably a near a first down. No, it's a pass. Darnold, he's throwing it. And he throws it away. Are they going to say grounding or roughing the passer? Time to back out. Keandre Jones, he recently got a dev story and we completed it, even though we lost. Uh, yeah, that's definitely. If you're Keandre Jones, I understand, like, where you're coming from. You're trying to improve stats and all that, because you are going to be a free agent at the end of this year. Well, maybe. I'm I'm very okay EA quick game in this man for him. all of this it's not that good but Keandre Jones he might be a free agent at the end of the year I'm very high on bringing him back at the moment they're gonna lose a yard as there was great protection and also great coverage Springs up third and free. I'm once again very interested in bringing him back. He's what 25 year old, 71 overall star dev, and he wasn't a starter, but he's definitely played like one. He took in for Dante Fowler Jr. who got injured. As they're going to elect to go for it on fourth and three instead of taking the more than likely guaranteed two possession lead with the field goal, they're going to try, and it's going to work out as Robbie Anderson catches that ball. And AJ Terrell, arguably our best corner, best defensive player, heck, even potentially best player. Caffey was his yard on play. What's up the first down? And if you're Carolina, are you going to go for it again if you don't not convert? Okay, what the heck is that? EA, really? You've been very controversial this game. And that, that's the icing on the cake. What the heck was that? Sam Darnold broke a tackle and rushes into the end zone. Unbelievable. Time to step out of character, Sec. 
you're making uh, Christian McCaffrey seem like he's freaking the best player of all time in every sport combined. And you're making Sam Darnold seem like a, a top 10 quarterback all time. Well, I have Cam Newton, who should be better than Sam Darnold in all aspects. And he's just not. Cam Newton, he overfroze there. Sam Darnold probably would have completed that. Vernon 10 now from 25. Newton, he's going to tweet that pass to Ridley. And I reckon... Don't hike the ball, please, please, please. Oh my god, that changes the game. That that ends it. Once again, McCaffrey jukes a guy there. What the hell is going on, EA? So, and that's the end of the first quarter. If we don't punt the ball there before the quarter runs out, by EA's logic, uh, the Falcons would have gone for it on fourth down. Which I would have much preferred because by how this goes, we will be lucky to even score. Let alone score, manage to hold them to no point, and score again in the, the time range we have. Third and three from the 35. Darnold looking wide open is DJ Moore. Who who was supposed to be on him? Like who who's in coverage there? Who the hell is supposed to be guarding their best receiver on the team? Who are you? No Igbinogane. Why aren't you covering him? No, never mind. Boy is aid Oluwakun. What are you doing? Great play by No Igbinogane. William Jackson stayed on McCaffrey that whole way. Nelik Benogane sees he's practically in a lose-lose situation. He's got two people practically wide open as long as... And this is probably the better option at this time. When does he get that ball out? Nelik Benogane notices how wide open he is. And I bet what he was hoping was for Richie Grant to pull over to McCaffrey and William Jackson to cover DJ Moore. Because, but because of Foyce Adelukun, it causes so much confusion. Foyce Adelukun is supposed to be covering Tommy Tremble. No, we is supposed to be covering DJ Moore. And William Jackson is supposed to be covering Christian McCaffrey. If anything, Igbenogne did his... Technically didn't do his job, but... Honestly, even though he didn't do his job, he probably did the better option. Foya said to Luke, you gotta be better than that, man. You not covering your man allowed them to get a completion. But the way Ibn Agane, I'm assuming if that's how he actually fought it through. Very complex, but at the same time, that feels like the only solution. Either that, or he was hoping Darnold would throw the ball to Tommy Tremble. And he'd be able to, to go over there and uh, break it up. As Who was that? Now, who was that? And was this just him getting beat deep? Um, let's see. AJ Terrell, yeah. Press coverage. Okay. Now, I don't know whose fault this is. But DJ Moore. He's about to... Freaking... He had either guy. Boyase to Lukun. Double teaming this guy. And he's still open. Nobi Nagane is having to cover this guy. And uh, number 20, that's Bradley Ro Roby, is guarding the QB scramble to the right, but the left side just wide open. Never mind, Keandre Jones slipped the ball. Great job by him. A great job 
So this is essentially just, it would have been practically either a touchdown or a Sam Darnold incompletion by, you know, just missing a receiver. Either way, because he had both Robbie Anderson and DJ Moore wide open down the field. It just depended on who he picked. He picked Robbie Anderson and threw that ball perfectly and then touchdown. But what sucks is we used to dominate Carolina in this series. Season one, we split. We uh, we split. We, we, s we didn't we split. We uh, sweeped. We swept them two nothing. Season two, last season, uh, we went one zero one. We beat them the first time we played, and then we tied the second time we played. What a play! And Derek Brown's injured. It's a shame it's too late for a comeback because we'd have a chance. And Stephon Gilmore has his X factor. And in year three this year, we are one or we're 0 and 1 about to go 0 and 2. And I doubt we mean the playoffs because Carolina they seem poised to make it. We don't. We're dropping to 2 and 7. If we win out, we'll finish with double digits. But at the same time, at this point, I don't even know if that's enough. Newton, he's going to scramble out. He's going to do it himself. And he has a wide open room. And he's going to take it all the way up to 35. And Yatira Gross Matos gets injured. Their whole front four, front seven, whatever. They're all getting injured. It's a shame we're down 17 points now with five and a half to go. Or else we could potentially make a comeback. That pass is complete. That's Derek Gore. I reckon if we score before four and a half, we'll have a chance still. But that does not mean run the football. Running the football here is not going to help. Oh my god. Daryl Williams, offensive coordinator. Great play call there, honestly. Like, that gain of four, but allows the clock to run. Is, that's just so amazing. And you're probably going to run it again, aren't you? No, he's not. Newton, going to roll out. He's going to throw. That's complete. That's Ben Jenkins up to the seven. How fast can the Falcons score now? We're looking about, don't you dare run this football. I'm looking at a two-yard gain if it's a run. Pass. Calvin Ridley does not get out of bounds, and that probably will seal the game there. With just over three and a half to go, probably going to be under three and a half by the time this play's over. It is. Newton throws, and Marquise Brown is down at the one. And that's definitely probably the dagger. Bird and goal, it's going to be a run play more than likely. And it was 244. That's CJ Han, the fullback, and we score, but with exactly three minutes left to go, and this is suddenly a 24 to 10. Yeah, 24 to 10 game. I had to make sure that extra point went in before, you know, I finished. We're down by 14. We're attempting the onside kick. I feel like it is a bit too early for it. Because any score by them, well, assuming it's not a safety, you know, they get a safety, it's technically not over. But I'd say a field goal or a touchdown, that will end the game, because they'll be up three scores at that point. And they're at that 39, so it's going to be a 56-yard attempt. So it's a deep kick, but I definitely think it's doable. Graham Cano hit from 53 earlier this game, so. It's going to be a motion, and it's going to be a handoff to McCaffrey. And he's going to be stopped at the 37, that's going to take us to the two-minute warning. If you're Carolina now, do you run or pass the football? Third and four, it's a handoff to McCaffrey. And he's going to be down at the 35, first time out by the Falcons. This kick decides the game. If Graham Gano makes it, this game is over. If he misses, the Falcons still have life. 52-yard attempt is up. And that's just heartbreaking. It was a bad kick and everything. You can see 
instantly it's wobbling so much you're like oh my god did he actually miss he gets it bounces off the crossbar and goes in literally just like justin tucker's 66 yard field goal attempt off the crossbar and went in the fans probably felt heartbroken and then excitement What a job by Graham Gano. Knowing this kick means so much. And he comes through and delivers. Now the Falcons with George Perry won a race tackle. A minute 46 at their own 28. Down 17 with two timeouts. More than likely lost this game. Look to uh, try and come back and win. As Cam Newton going to look to throw. He's going to scramble out. He's going to throw on the run. And that pass nearly intercepted. I don't even know who that was. I think that was Stephon Gilmore. And I think it was intended for Steve Leslie. A very dangerous pass. Second and ten. Newton just sitting in the pocket all day. He's going to scramble out now. He's going to throw on the run. And that pass is going to be complete. That's Melvin Gordon. Ridley. Up to the 28. If you're Atlanta, I don't really think using the timeouts matter. I mean, you could be fine with or without him. He's going towards the end zone. And they're going to say he was out of bounds. Now, is that the correct call? Newton saw a window. He took it. That is inbounds. And we can't do anything. I'm not able to sim. Holy crap. I'm going to call a play and it's going to say booth of you. Oh my god. Kyle Pitts caught it. But. Are they going to say he did? That was on CJ Henderson. What a catch. What a throw. Back, of the, back corner of the end zone I believe. Practically. And the officials come running out here. And they're going to give him the touchdown. A Falcons still have life. It is very unlikely. They need an onside. They need two onside kicks. The extra point is up. And good. 27 to 17 now. Like I said, I could feel a comeback. But I just knew it was too late. And the kick. It's good. And could not force a fumble. Assuming there is no screw up with the snap. That will do it for the game. And the Panthers come out and win 27-17. Falcons are going to use their timeout in hopes of a mess up. But ultimately I know how the CPU will work. They're going to kneel it again. Timeout. They're going to kneel it again and then they're going to call... Either a punt or a field goal attempt with like five seconds left. So ultimately, it's going to mean nothing. So ultimately, either we're going to get like a last second touchdown or it's just going to end 27-17. Eh, you can see the punting units out there. And returning it. And that's going to do it. So, we get swept by the Panthers this season. By the way, I'm just saying, Newton won hell of a game. This is the first quarterback I've thoroughly enjoyed since Matt Ryan. I didn't really even enjoy Matt Ryan that much. I just knew he was our best and only option considering how much we were paying him. Sam Darnold was 17 for 24. Uh... 
202 yards and a touchdown. Newen. 18 for 24, 199. He didn't throw a touchdown pass, but if you didn't know, when it comes down to reviews and challenges, they don't actually update the stats. Another thing EA should fix, but we know they won't. McCaffrey, 18 for 89, 4.9 average in his touchdown. Melvin Gordon, 7 for 3. Sam Darn, 4 for 1 in a touchdown. Daryl Williams, 1 for 4. CJ Ham, 1 for 1. Cam Newton, 1 for 22. Chuba Hubbard, Chuba Hubbard, 1 for 2. Now, this is what I mean. Melvin Gordon, he's going up against some tough D lines. Why is the offensive coordinator still trying to feed him the ball? Robbie Anderson was 7 for 9, 119. And a touchdown. DJ Moore, 6 for 45. Kyle Pitts, 5 for 74. Kevin Bradley, 4 for 24. Marquise Brown, 3 for 21. Tommy Trumbull, 2 for 9. Elvin Gordon, 2 for 39. Ben Jenkins, 1 for 9. Derek Orr, 1 for 15. Steve Leslie, 1 for 11. CJ Ham, 1 for 6. Christian McCaffrey, 1 for 11. And Chubba Hubbard, 1 for 18. Pat Elfine, oh, out of sack. And two out by Morgan Moses. Oh, and Dennis Daly, out of sack. So, very good game from our offensive line. As you can see, the only position I feel like we need to fill is right tackle. And we might slide Addison Nolan over there. Who knows? Defensively, two sacks for Brian Burns, one for Grady Jarrett, one for John Kaminsky. No interceptions, that's right. So, that's all there is for you defensively. Kicking. Graham Gano was two for two. His long was the 53 yarder that sealed the deal. Young Oku was 1 for 1. His long was 30. Punting Presley Harmon was 4 for 161. Scott Pagel was 2 for 74. George Claiborne was 3 for 54. Oscar Warwick was 1 for 16. Terrence Marshall, 1 for 4. Randy Robbie Anderson, 1 for 1. George Claiborne, 2 for 8. Christian McCaffrey, 3 for 5. Even though we got only 5 yards on punt returns, unbelievable. How many. Like. He probably should have had three yards, and he's got an extra two because of his juking. Our season goal is apparently to reach the divisional round. That does not seem like it's happening. You can see how close that bar is. It is nearly gone already. Declan Graham and Cody Swain with upgrades. Probably the... Worst upgrades we could have gotten. We have a recap. Nguyen, whatever you have to say. Sh shut up, Nguyen. I see you saying something bad. You played your ass off, okay? For someone in their first start on this team, you played like you've played on this team every day of your life. Quick freaking saying that it was bad from us. This guy, by the way, Ryan Warner. Uh, not very good. He p knew and played a great game. We're two and seven going against the three and six Saints. They beat the Buccaneers, so. The Panthers now have, I believe, a one-and-a-half game lead. Why am I doing that? As we now look to see where we are traffic-wise, we would be picking second overall. And the only team ahead of us... Wait, no, that's not true, actually. Is the Lions. We'd be picking third overall because of the Chargers, who got their first win, by the way. So we're creeping up on that that good draft pick. You can see seven straight losses, not having a very good season. But that's going to do it. I hope you guys enjoyed. I did. It sucks that I feel like we found our quarterback when he is, a, I believe, a 67 overall, 31-year-old or something. He's 34, no crap, even worse. So this is probably his only year he's going to be a starter or on this team, well, depending on how he regresses.
We got PJ Walker on multi-year deal. He's he's here for this season and next. Uh, I believe the Chargers have Herbert, so they should be good. And I believe the Lions have a pretty solid quarterback. They have, I believe, Goff, and then they have like this young X Factor. Yeah, Spencer Woodard. So, I don't know if they'll take the quarterback. I don't think either of them will. Let's see who the Chargers have, actually. I went and checked the quarterbacks who would be on the move. And it is Justin Herbert, like his draft class. So, Burrow to uh, Herbert. Love hurts. All of them guys. And I believe all of them but Hurts. A lot of the guys I named Hurts and Tua have gotten contract extensions. So those are some guys to look out for from free agency. I believe Hurts more than likely will go to free agency. So. But I hope you guys enjoyed. I did. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.